I'm here with Jacob Sonnenschein, markets reporter at Barron's. Jacob, come on down. Let's talk about what your buy stock is. First of all, air products and chemicals. Um, so this is an interesting one. It's not a name that we talk about an, an enormous amount. The stock is down this year. So let's get to your case here. And the stock being down is part of it because you say a recovery is coming. I like quality companies that are down double digits. It is a little bit cyclical because of the end markets that it's exposed to in industrial gases, selling to a lot of manufacturers, consumer end, end markets, stuff like that. So it's gotten crushed. Uh, China, which is a big part of the business, has been a problem. Uh, roughly $3 billion of sales in the last reported quarter. As you move out a few quarters this year, every quarter, and new projects come online and they're not delayed, and China continues continues to grow. Analysts are looking for Asia growth for, for revenue for APD of just under 2%. If you think about the way China's growing, it's actually pretty reasonable. New projects coming online, those quarterly revenue figures should come in better. Um, there is a bit of a long-term thesis, which I'm sure we'll get to, but in the near term, I think the earnings estimates have reset lower, the stock has reset lower, mm -hmm. and it's a decent uh, buy here. Okay, let's talk about the next point here, which is that they have fixed contracts for their industrial gases. Yeah, exactly. And that, that so they are cyclical because of their end markets, but with those fixed contracts, mm -hmm. it does make that cyclicality, that sensitivity to the economy a little bit less so. Uh, they have there's a certain price range and volume count of just like amount of chemicals uh, in those contracts that they can sell. Mm -hmm. So investors know that there's that buffer on the downside with revenue and earnings because of those contracts, right? So that's yeah. that's not a terrible situation. Okay, and then the third thing is sort of like the new zeitgeist in gases, if there is such a thing, and that's clean hydrogen. And so what is Air Products doing in that space? Clean hydrogen, the, mar the total market for that substance today is zero dollars. <laughs> what they're doing in that space is they're ramping up. There are three big chemical makers in the world. It's Air Liquide in Europe, it's Lindy, which is uh, a, a peer to uh, Air Products, and it's Air Products. If you are a larger, fairly well-scaled well uh, chemical maker, Air Products has a market cap of about $50 billion, you can invest in clean hydrogen. That market could be, when I look at the number of tons that could be purchased, price per ton, it could be hundreds of billions uh, globally over the next you know, five, six, eight years. I don't know that Air Products gets so much of that, but they're doing less than $15 billion in annual sales. That's a huge opportunity, and it makes me bullish on the long term. Okay, well, we always like talking about the risks, and the risk is actually around clean hydrogen. You talk about the risks from delays. I mean, there's also it's also just sort of a risky unknown where that market is going to go as well. So when you talk to analysts about a fairly cyclical company like Air Products, and you and they say, well, the risk is project delays. Okay, that's analyst jargon for that industry. What that really means is that if customers are delaying. Uh, purchasing things from, uh, or new, new projects to come online, new contracts, those delays, that, that to me, I, I hear the word cyclicality. Mm. I hear that uh, industrial companies around the world um, are pulling back on their spend uh, because their end markets are a little bit slow because you have higher rates that do continue to flow through the global economy. Gotcha. All right. Well, let's get to the other stock that you don't like here. And that one is in big oil. We're talking about ConocoPhillips. The shares are up a little bit year to date here, but let's get to why you don't like it. Oil prices. Now, this is a little counterintuitive to me, oil prices, because oil prices are up. Why is this not? A, why is this a, a risk for ConocoPhillips? And it's funny because a few months ago I had written you probably want to buy oil because it looked from a technical standpoint where like oil prices were going up. So it happened. So oil prices go way up. Uh, 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 U.S. oil producers go way up. ConocoPhillips, since that there's like a little bottom somewhere with oil and the stocks in January, mm -hmm. ConocoPhillips has looked like this chart, and so it's up about 21, 22 percent. And it's baking in higher oil price, um, a lot of leverage to the bottom line for earnings because they have a lot of fixed costs and higher earnings estimates. Those earnings estimates for oil will probably come in. The reason I don't like ConocoPhillips is because Chevron and Exxon have mm -hmm. talked more about transitioning to responsible, clean oil production. Mm -hmm. ConocoPhillips has talked about it, to be fair, but not a lot. And in their 10K, they talk about risks, not opportunities. They talk about risk when it comes to clean energy. Mm. So they've had this big rally already, and they're not up there, in my opinion, with Chevron and Exxon with the future. Okay, and as you point out, the clean energy projects take time. So I guess what you're saying is if they're not already doing, if they're just talking, then they're going to be behind their competitors. Oh, the whole thing is going to take time. And, and, and there are not a lot of numbers around 
uh, cleaner, uh, you know, zero carbon emission. Like BP talked about it by, by getting to net zero by 2050. Um, and if you, if you just read up around, you, I think you want to get away from analyst land because so much of this is unquantified today. There's an article from The Guardian saying, hey, this is going to take some time addressing the entire space. Right, exactly. Okay, so let's also talk about what's happening with trades here, insider trades. Sales, I assume, if you're looking for a negative sing signal that we've had some insider selling going on. Yeah, you're talking about ConocoPhillips? Yes. Yeah, that's never a great sign. That's not a huge focal point for me when I look at um, a company, but uh, I probably will be in the future. But, I mean, that's never a great sign. Yeah. All right. So the risk that it could make it do better here is that you do have oil going to triple digits or beyond, I guess. So oil's gone up to a little bit, a little above 80. I'm thinking of WTI, Brent crude's a little bit higher than that. And then it stops, right? It had this little little spike when the Israel-Iran issue happened, mm -hmm. um, and then it came back down. So it's like, okay, if that issue can't uh, cause more upside, what you would need more upside for the price of oil is a reflaring or a worsening of the situation, unfortunately, overseas. If you'd get that, yes, you get a pop in oil and you, you'd want to own ConocoPhillips, but I never would tell somebody, hey, own a stock because this event might happen and I have no right. idea. Right. All right. So let's sum up what you've said. And by the way, as a Barron's reporter, you don't own any of these or have a position in any of these individual stocks. But let's uh, sum up what you're telling people. You would recommend buying air products and chemicals based on an achievable recovery, limited downside risk, and the big potential in clean hydrogen. On the other side, you say avoid ConocoPhillips for limited growth in oil prices, a longer timeline in clean energy initiatives, and insider selling. Thanks so much for being here, Jay. Thank you. Good to see you. And thank you so much for watching Goodbye or Goodbye. We'll be bringing you new episodes three times a week at 3.30 p.m. Eastern.